The Finals has surprise launched on PC, Xbox Series, and PlayStation 5. This cleverly uses an open destruction engine to create dynamic multiplayer heist situations that make every match feel like an unpredictable, crumbly sandbox. But to make sure you're squeezing the most juice out of the finals, I'm going to show you a few important tips you need to know and can put to use in nearly every game. This is an updated version 2 of my previous video on the finals, with some new stuff added, including a few advanced traversal tricks, tactics for defending or assaulting the cash out station, a recoil tip that can help reduce your time to kill, and my absolute favorite substance, goo. Now let's dive in. I'm Alex, and think about sticking around if you like what I do here. First, the puffy goo stuff has tons of tactical uses. You can use it to seal off entry points, get lucky by snaring an enemy in place, or completely block the line of sight of turrets so they don't even shoot you at all. If your loadout is lacking traversal abilities though, goo can be used to create dynamic steps you can climb on and even bridges that can hold your body weight. With the heavy class's goo gun, that can be used to build really long bridges that can span across large open areas. Just continue shooting over and over at one spot directly in front of you without moving the crosshair too much to the sides. Another trick with the goo gun is shooting directly underneath yourself while jumping to create a quick elevated position for yourself. Jump and shoot at about this pace to continually climb upward. Too fast or too slow will probably knock you off. All of this goo stuff can be quickly destroyed if fire is applied to it, so watch out for that or use that to counter it. A bonus thing that you might not know is that when goo expands out into existence, its popcorn-like force can actually move things around. That could be the cash box itself or the entire cash out station. Just apply the goo right next to the base of the object, and that'll kind of bounce it around. Use this trick to tactically knock the cash out station off the top of a structure, or just move it to a nearby spot that's easier for your team to defend. Knowing how to harness the game's destruction engine can drastically change your success or failure during a match. For example, if you knock out more than half of a building's ground floor walls, it'll unhinge the structure from the environment. Depending on the size of the building, that could cause it to start to crumble to pieces, topple completely over, or change the entire dynamic of a contested cash out point inside. If your team is struggling to chew through the enemy's fortifications, just take the whole building down instead. The Heavy class can use the Sledgehammer's alternate attack to destroy the foundational walls pretty quickly, by the way. Something I don't see too many new players being aware of is this control console at the top of the cranes. Interacting with that puts you on full-time wrecking ball duty, and you can swing that thing around like you have something to prove. Beware though, other players can knock the entire thing over on you. Some matches will get these hanging platforms added to them, and those can be easily taken down as well if you know where to aim. All you need to do is destroy two of the anchor points that connected above, but two that are right next to each other. If you do that, it'll instantly topple the whole thing, bringing anyone up there down to you instead of you needing to fight your way up to them. The cash boxes can be deposited from a distance with a well-placed throw if the box lands or bounces into the square section of the cash out station. Luckily, you have some light telekinesis abilities, I guess, because you can grab and throw things a further distance than you might expect. Also, crouching very slightly extends the reach of your force grab. Throwing something without sprinting does a shorter range chuck of what you're holding. However, holding sprint while throwing will greatly increase the power of that toss. The heavy class has the beefiest arms, or force attunement I guess, because they can mentally throw things the furthest. Random things like potted plants, chairs, tables, and even the cash box itself deal damage when you throw it at someone. So hypothetical bonus points if you can eliminate someone with the objective itself. Send me the clip at BoomstickAlex Twitter. This next recoil and aim tip is mostly just for the brand new players out there who might initially struggle with the game's time to kill or not understand that every video game is not COD. 
not the fish. That, that'd be weird. With the medium classes AKM that most of the new players will be starting with, don't place your very first shot right on the target's head. You'll find that that'll bounce up your view immediately with the gun itself obscuring your target, which can temporarily throw off your tracking of them. Instead, try to place your very first shot at the upper part of their chest, think top lungs, which will perfectly bounce your recoil up onto their head for the rest of your shots, ideally. That makes it easier to counter the weapon's recoil and continue to land subsequent hits right on their face, while keeping your tracking of their movement less obscured by your gun model. You'll feel this in the handling itself more than maybe it translates here. All over the map you're going to find these red explosive canisters, and they need to hit a player directly or travel a certain distance before detonating. Otherwise they'll bounce right off the surface you might be trying to destroy if you're too close. However, if you throw it and immediately press the grab button, you can yoink it back in after it's been primed for detonation. That will let you pre-pop these to use them at closer range to the impact point, and you have a little bit over 2 seconds to throw it once primed. You can also lay these canisters down on their side to use them as short range rocket sleds. Just stand on it and shoot the nozzle to span a gap in awkward style. The flammable yellow barrels take even longer to detonate after thrown, about 5 seconds after they land, but there's a trick to kinda shorten that as well. While holding one, you can melee bash it to prime it for detonation ahead of time, indicated by the flames starting to burn. Then you have about 5 seconds to throw it before it explodes. This can catch people off guard that are expecting a longer detonation time. All of the zip lines, ropes, and ladders that you use can be destroyed so that no one else can use them. If you just shoot them a bit, melee smack them, or the fastest hit them with a sledgehammer, they will break. If your team is really hunkered down defending somewhere, try to eliminate all the ways the other teams could easily get up to where you are. You can also get some free, easy kills if you destroy a zip line over a death pit while someone's on it. I did this once, the video capture didn't save it. I I swear. If you jump pad up to something but you don't want to be followed by another team enjoying your bounce, you can shoot those after use to cover your tracks. All of this can be countered though by other classes own traversal abilities, like the unlockable zipline the medium weight class can get. Something else to know is that turrets can be placed onto walls. But the turret is a physical thing, not just an effect, so you can use these as a step ladder to climb up to higher places. If you're lacking traversal options, there's often always a way to get up to somewhere with a bit of ingenuity. By the way, turrets and some of the other deployables can be picked right back up by interacting with them, which will instantly replenish their charge. Using angled jump pads is a good way to catapult yourself around the map quickly, and you can create your own angles with goo. Just plop some down and you can place a jump pad pretty much anywhere on it to create launchers at any angle you might need. The heavy class's charge and slam ability is either a rush forward bash on the ground or a slam down if used in the air. However, if you press jump before the ground based charge animation concludes, you can end it with a bonus slam for a little extra destruction. The more speed the heavy mass is coming down, the greater the impact point and the higher the damage is inflicted to nearby players. So you can find the highest spot on the map and become the wrecking ball itself. These buttons that can open and close bridges, elevators, and walls can be activated just by shooting them. You don't have to go up to them and press interact. That's useful if an enemy team is right behind you or trying to shoot you. For this next one, I see a lot of brand new players asking how they access their reserve loadout. Well, what you choose to slot over there in the reserve section is gear or weapons you can swap out to during a match in between respawns or rounds in tournament play. I would recommend having at least one mid to long range weapon and one close or melee range weapon to swap to, depending on if the objective is out in the open or in a cramped interior. Alright, let me know if you'll put any of those to use, or if you figured out some tips and tricks of your own that you'd like to share with the rest of the class. 
I'll be digging through the comments to see who has the most interesting or big brain tactics that they can make work. Thanks for checking this out today. Now get out there and fill up those lobbies. I'm really enjoying the game and I want it to succeed. I'll see you next time.